Hi, I'm Cheryl Brunette, and today we're going to take a good look at the edges of your knitting. There are a lot of different kinds of them, and you need to treat them well. We're going to start by looking at four words or concepts that help us understand edges in knitting. They are edge, selvage, which is spelled two ways, seam, and border. So let's start with the edges of some simple shapes. Let's pretend that this is a short, fat scarf. And as soon as we cast on down here, we create an edge and we knit back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until we bind off up here, which creates another edge. And along the way, we have created these side edges simply as um, a matter of them being the edges of our knitting. Now, another way to do this is to cast on, this is the less common way, but we can cast on along this edge and knit back and forth. Again, we have a funny scarf, or we can make this into a cowl, put it together either as a Mobius or a plain little circlet. When we bind off, we've created an edge, and we have created some side edges here. We could do an afghan the same way. Cast on, knit back and forth, all the way up with multiple cable panels and all sorts of wonderful things, maybe a lot of knit and purl changes, and bind off up here and we've created our edges. Maybe if we've thought ahead we've done a nice little seed stitch border in there, but nonetheless we have created an edge. Another way to create an edge is very different. We could take that same afghan shape and cast on, let's say, 101 stitches. 50 of which will go there, one in the corner, and 50 there. And then when I come back, I would decrease three, right in, or knit three together in that corner, and work to there, and then come back up, decrease again, so that I would create this mitered square. <laughs> this isn't a very good one, but... So this we have to just say that that's a square. So that I've created the first piece, and these are actually edges. They're the edges of my ordinary knitting, and this is a cast on piece. Then I would cast on some more, pick up some stitches here, and go back and forth to make a smaller square, because that's what my design is. By the time I got up here, as I built these squares, one after another, pick up and pick up and went back and forth. So I built them all the way up. By the time I got up into this corner, this entire edge would be the edges of my knitting from going back and forth. They would be neither cast on nor bound off, whereas this is all cast on. In fact, there aren't any bound off edges in a, just one bound off stitch at a time and in this kind of Afghan. So you can see that there are a lot of different ways to do edges. Now, salvage is a really interesting looking word. First of all, let's look at the word itself. It comes from the late Middle English self-edge, a word that means self-edge, and there's an older Dutch word to it. I prefer to use this spelling because it's very clear. And when I started to look at the literature as to how people use the term salvage, I found out that there was not a lot of consistency. People use it to mean different things. One of the things that people mean is just the regular edge, just like we talked about earlier. It could be a, a cast on edge, a bound off edge, or a side edge. That's a salvage because it is a kind of self edge, or at least that's what some people call it. Another way to that people talk about salvage, or bring it up at least, is in garment construction. When you are making a sweater, for example, you need, if you're going to use mattress stitch for your seam, which is pretty typical for, let's say, um, a stock and knit sweater, you need to add one stitch at this edge, one stitch at that edge, on both the front and back. Now, if you want to make a sweater that's 40 inches around, 
and you have four stitches to the inch <clears throat> and you use up four of those stitches, it's going to be a 39 inch around sweater instead of 40. That's why you have to add that extra stitch. And unfortunately, patterns seldom go into that amount of detail. They don't always tell you, add an extra stitch for seaming, or I've already included an extra stitch for seaming. So this knowing about selvages and about doing shaping inside of them, where the, all this stuff that we're going to study in more detail as we go forward, it's important because um, it will help you get a more successful outcome to your sweater. You're going to be a lot happier if you know about these things and can apply them to the patterns even when the pattern doesn't talk about it itself. And the third way I've seen the term selvage used is for a kind of little decorative edge. This one, this is a couple of stitches wide. This is a little garter stitch edge. It's actually almost a border. The difference between a border and a selvage, well, as I said, these terms are not all that precisely defined as they're used in the literature about knitting. So we're just defining them for how we're going to talk about them as we study them. And this is a little bit of a decorative edge. Sometimes you have a nice slip stitch along there. It can be a single stitch. It can be usually just one to two stitches, but we just call it a decorative finish, a selvage that we've added. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is seams. Now, <laughs> When I was planning this class and I, you know, I took a couple of weeks to read all kinds of things and really I've been thinking about it because this is a, an important and complicated subject. When I first was thinking about it, I thought, well, that's pretty straightforward. A seam is a seam. But a good friend of mine who's an expert seamstress and who knits only a little bit asked me, when is something a seam in knitting? When you knit the shoulders together, is that a seam? So I had to rethink this, and the definition I came up with for our purposes here is that a seam is a join between two pieces of knitting that is not grafting. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, we can sew things together. Like I could take this piece and this piece, and I don't know why I'd want to, but actually they would probably match up pretty nicely because I have a little garter stitch at the very edge and I could just match up those little knots all the way. And they're probably pretty close to the same um, row gauge. And if I sewed them together with a tapestry needle and a length of yarn, that would be a seam. But sometimes, when we make shoulders, and I've shown you this before, you come up, you keep live stitches in the shoulders, in the front and the back, and you knit them together with a three needle bind off or a um, two, ne two needles and a crochet hook. I like to cro uh, use a crochet hook to bind them off. Is that a seam? Well, yes, it is kind of because it has some structure to it. So sewing is a seam. Knitting together forms a seam. Um, and picking up along an edge. If, for example, I wanted to pick up this sleeve, the cap, and knit it down along here, that also forms a kind of edge with a little bit of a, of a seam allowance on the inside. Seams help you define edges in knitting, and also, as you're knitting, you need to prepare the edges so that you can make really good seams. Finally, there are borders, which are wider bands that, of knitting at the edge of a piece of knitting. They're wider than the selvage, which is usually confined to one or two stitches. And they can have various purposes, borders can. They can be structural, for example, or um, these are put on there to keep it from rolling. This is just a big old gauge swatch that I made and this is two or three stitches at the it looks like two stitches of garter at the edge and I washed and dried this this is a nice acrylic and I just wanted these borders so that I could measure my gauge really easily and also so I could see how this yarn behaves because I had never used it before 
um, edges or borders that you add can also be functional. You have to have a place to hang your buttons, right, if you're going to do a cardigan and make those little holes to hold the buttons. So these were picked up and knit out and their function is to form a closure of a sweater. Or borders can be just totally decorative. Here is my big garter stitch baby blanket and look at this look at the length this is more this is like six inches of a decorative lace at the edge of it yep this is the right side it hasn't been blocked in a long time but this was simply to make it pretty and it certainly has done that and also it added quite a bit of it added a foot of width to it so let's go back to our original concepts. I'm a teacher in real life as well as on video and we tell you what we're going to tell you. We tell you and then we tell you what we told you. And when I was all done with this, the work on this, it turns out, and I did not intend this right from the beginning, but this is how it worked out. Each of the four categories of concepts had three things to define them. Edges are cast on, bound off, or formed vertically as you knit. Selvages, that term is used to refer to the regular edge stitch, one or two stitches that are added to pieces for seaming, or one or two stitches that are added to an edge that will not be seamed and is just meant to be a decorative finish. Seams is when you join two pieces without grafting. You can do that by sewing with a tapestry needle, by knitting together and binding off, for example, shoulder seams, or by picking up along an edge and knitting out. And you can pick up the entire edge and knit all at once, or you can just pick up one stitch at a time and build it as you're going along. Finally, we had borders. They're kind of like a salvage, but wider. And they have a structural purpose, for example, to prevent rolling, or they can be functional, like cardigan bands, or they can be decorative. So here are our dozen points from today. And I will probably make these available for you as a download. I'll get this typed up. Knitting is magical. Think about it. With relatively few skills and about $10 worth of tools, you in your very own home can create thousands of different kinds of fabric. You manipulate some knits and pearls, you cross a few stitches, you make some holes, throw in some color, and every single one of those pieces of fabric can be different. I could knit for 10 hours every day from now until the day I died, making 12 inch squares and everyone could be different. But if I wanna make a garment or a useful object or a toy, I really need to pay attention to the edges of those pieces that go into it and how I'm going to finish them. Otherwise, I could be really disappointed in the final project, even if the yarn and the fabric themselves are beautiful. So we're gonna spend some time on edges they're really important and they're worth it. Next week, we're going to look at some single stitch selvage edges. I hope that you will join me. And until then, knit a little bit each day. It's good for you. I, I mean that, it really is good for you. Bye. Keep rolling. I just have to figure out what's next. I'll cut here. Um, what are you going to cut to? Well, I don't know. I guess I have to start over, don't I? <laughs>